Hey everyone, this is Dazzy Clayton from the Anything Goes podcast and fan-based music magazine. And you are watching China, China, China podcast. <clears throat> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today joining all the way from South Africa. We got Dazzy Clayton joining the podcast. Hi Dazzy. Hi China, how are you doing man? I'm good. How how's your morning in South Africa? <laughs> yeah, it's quite all right. Uh, we we're struggling with things called load shedding over here. I don't know if you guys know what that is where you live. No. But it's it's basically they turn our power off for a few hours a day because they're trying to save on electricity and power. So yeah, they they cut us off during a few hours of the day. So about half an hour, an hour ago, we just came back from load shedding. So my power and electricity and everything's on again. So at least right. I'm able to do this interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we luckily we we really don't face that here in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Good old South yes. Africa. <laughs> right. So, so does uh, it? I mean, I think we actually got connected early in the pandemic, right? So I think very early days of the pandemic, like somewhere in 2020. Um, yeah yeah and it's it's so funny how how i suddenly i came across so many different artists and different promotions and all that from south africa and yeah. before before that i didn't even know there was a, like a scene in south africa <laughs> <laughs> i knew like couple of bands but i didn't know uh, how was the pandemic for you personally i mean how did it affect you personally Well the the pandemic was very strange uh, obviously I think for everyone in the world uh, but for myself particularly it was very strange because um you know I'm I'm also a gig organizer mm. so I I organize events and gigs for bands and things like that but obviously with lockdown and the pandemic and that um we weren't able to do any gigs so there was like a big chunk of my if you want to call it salary or money that I get you know that I don't I didn't have for like two and a half years you know Mm. And yeah, I actually started the podcast, my my own podcast, um, during the pandemic. You know what I mean. So I, I had to keep myself busy somehow, and yeah, I had to do do that. But yeah, you know, it's just not only that. You know, so that that that's luckily my wife works, so you know she was able to bring in some money and all that. But it's not been easy for a lot of people, and then of course a lot of people have lost their lives from this whole thing. So yeah, it's been really really crazy. You know what I mean? It's crazy time for everyone, not just myself and. people in South Africa but all around the world. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Actually those two years like it's like kind of like two years the most of the one thing that I really understood when I was talking to all these different people different artists from around the world. Yeah. A lot of people were actually struggling that time especially like you know they had like depression and oh yeah. maybe they went into depression they had like loneliness and all these yeah. things right. So yeah. Was, for sure. I think I it's just highlighted like how important the you know talking to people going out and all these things that we just take for granted is important yeah. right how important that is It's very very important and it's like for especially during hard lockdown you weren't even allowed to see people you know you're only allowed to see your household your immediate family who you live with but you couldn't even go and hug a friend or do anything like that Mm. and i think you know if you're really struggling with mental health issues or with depression you know that that's bad on its own but now having covid and lockdown on top of that you know it, it brings on a whole bunch of more depression and mental health issues and problems and things like that so you know it's very hard for look like i said it's hard for everyone but if you're really struggling with mental health and depression then it's been particularly really hard for you for you then you know so Yeah, my heart goes out to people who are struggling and still struggling with that. You know what I mean? It's 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 mm. it pay, pays big toll on your on your brain and your way of thinking. You know. Yeah, and I yeah. think one more thing I I also felt during the pandemic, all this you know the social media like the divide and people are arguing about like vaccines yeah. and all these things and. <laughs> it, you're just there and you keep on you sometimes. So that's also yeah. really. it it builds on top of all that stress right <laughs> yeah yeah it's like you don't know what to do like should you take the vaccine and should you be the anti vax or should you you know and then you got this some people who are really extreme about it and they really feel 
you know, that they should, shouldn't take the vaccine that this is going to happen. And then you got the other one saying this, this should, you should take it because, you know, he's trying to save the world, try to save people's lives. And, and at the end of the day, you don't quite know what to do. So, and then also people get ugly on, on online, you know, they're all behind the keyboard, behind a computer and they say what they want and they really attack people who don't take it or people who do take it. You know, they, they really attack people and it becomes really horrible. You know what I mean? So, right. <laughs> yeah yeah but but uh, you know there was this thing like, for me the selling point was they said it's the mark of the beast so i said okay let's get it <laughs> <laughs> you got to start somewhere then <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so does it tell me a little bit about where you are and like you know the city or the place where you are in south africa okay at the moment i'm from johannesburg in south africa i was actually born here uh, mm. But then I went, to, I went to a place in Durban, uh, to another city. I went there and I spent most of my life in Durban. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's where I grew up and got into music and all that kind of stuff. But then about 10 years ago, I moved down back to Johannesburg because I met my wife online. And mm. um, yeah, she lives in Johannesburg and I lived in Durban. So I decided to move back to Johannesburg. So yeah, that's where I am now. Um, and it's winter here in South Africa in Johannesburg. So it's pretty cold at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's that's where I am. I don't know if there's anything else you want to know about it, but uh, that's Johannesburg, South Africa, where I'm from. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, Dasi, let's talk about a little bit about your childhood. Like, what's your earliest uh, memory of music? Uh, my earliest memory of music, I would think, I think I would think it would would probably be Queen. And I, I have this, I have this memory of riding my bicycle, and you know that song from Queen, bicycle or bicycle right. race. Or bicycle. I used to ride, I used to ride my bicycle singing that song, and I, you know, and I used to have that playing in my head, and I would like ride my bicycle and I'd sing that bicycle, bicycle from Queen. So that's like my earliest, earliest memory, and I, and I'm, and even today I'm still a huge Queen and Freddie Mercury fan. Um, so I think that's, I probably started with other music somewhere along the line, but. That's that's probably the main focus point because that's that's the earliest earliest thing I can remember where I had anything to do with music, you know, any love for music. <laughs> right. So, like, yeah. what were the like like the other music that you discovered along the way? And yeah, and so like yeah, so that was like probably early in my life, and then as I got into my teenage years, uh, then I got into the grunge scene. I'm a huge grunge fan, so stuff like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, you know, Soundgarden all of those kind of bands that really got me into, into music and me wanting to be somehow in the music industry. So I got into all of that. And then from there, you know, you discover bands like Metallica, who's a bit met more harder and metal compared to the grunge scene. And then mm. Slayer comes in and Megadeth and, you know, Guns N' Roses, all of that like all formed over there. But I would say I really got into the grunge scene. You know, that was my, my thing. I was a real grunge boy and Nirvana was my band. You know, I, I loved Nirvana and I still do. So, yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so back in the day in South Africa, was was the international bands coming into South Africa or what was the scene like? Well, the thing is, I don't know if you know too much about South Africa, South African history, uh, but we got this thing called the apartheid where right. I'm sure you've heard of the, apart the apartheid. And during that era, bands weren't actually even allowed to to tour south africa it was it was a you know they weren't even allowed to do be a, you weren't allowed to enjoy that music so i would say you know bef even before my time you know look in the 90s when i was growing up apartheid finished in 1994 and that's more or less when i was becoming a teenager so it was breaking away from all that but before that there were no bands coming to south africa Right. And, you know, eventually there was, you know, I think the first band that I saw live from international was um, REM. They came, you know, in the early 90s. I think that was my first big one. Um, you know, and then from there, I've seen a few other bands. But I would say before the 90s or, you know, in the 80s, early 90s, there were no, no, no big bands coming here until about 94, 95. Then apartheid was finished. A new government came in, into into power and things change and we were allowed to uh you know have bands come over and that's when it started we weren't such a third world country anymore <laughs> <laughs> right so uh, yeah <clears throat> so how did you get into like you know 
did you always had that incline that you would do something you know related to music how how was it or did you like play any instruments or yeah did some yeah. stuff uh, as a kid or? it's it started out me being what me wanting to be in a band so I, i i started playing guitar like at the age of 13 14 you know and i i was really I was, you know me and my friend we were really in a band we really wanted to make this work but obviously you know i don't, Look, my friend's amazing. He's a great guitar player and a singer and all that. But I don't think I kind of had the chops of, you know, being a great guitar player with him and, you know, starting a band. So, you know, eventually you start realizing, okay, maybe being in a band isn't for me. He's still in a band, but like, you know, I had to like choose something else, but I still wanted to be in the in the music industry. Mm. So that, that's when I thought, well, maybe instead of me being on the stage, let me help artists. Uh, let me be behind the scenes and help artists to, who are on the stage and making music and things like that. So that's when I started, you know, started fan based music magazine. And, um, you know, I started interviewing bands and reviewing their music and trying to get their, their sound out of there, uh, sound, sound out there, you know, and promoting them. And then, yeah, and then I got into a whole bunch of, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, but then I'm, got into things like um, band management where I used to manage bands. Um, you know, I do the podcast now I've got, I've done radio, you know, so I've always trying to be in the music industry. I'm just not, not on the stage. I'm more behind the scenes of doing things, you know, and helping right. bands that way. <laughs> yeah. Actually back in the day, what I, what I really enjoyed is those signs that people created, right? Like, you know, they would like, Sometimes it's like Xerox, it's like photocopied and, you know, those, <laughs> those like, you know, DIY music, yeah. it's, we, we didn't call it a magazine, we call it a mu music sign or something like that, right? So that was a really good time. I, I, I still have like few of them back from, from like what I, when I used to collect. Sorry, I just got the do the dog back barking in the background here. So if you hear any <laughs> dogs barking, just excuse that. I try yeah, to put my mic on, my mic on mute, but yeah. So yeah. I do apologize about that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's amazing how, how how far technology has come. You know what I mean? Like I also remember looking in like the album sleeves, and you know, you, in a, looking at a CD and an album, you actually looking at all the sleeves, you know, and all the pictures and the, the lyrics of songs. You don't get any of that anymore. You know, it's right. all everything's online mp3 now you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's i mean it's it's everything is digital it's fine so, i mean you can find music quite easily you can consume it easily but but the feeling is different right because yeah yeah i would i would prefer to listen to digital for example if i'm just walking outside or maybe running i would prefer to have it but But if yeah. I'm listening, really listening, I would I want to have the physical copy in my hand because that that's yeah. a totally different experience. Yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of pros and cons. You know what I mean? I always I always think about this. There's a lot of pros and cons of what technology has has done and how because like the pro is maybe it's maybe it's a pro, maybe it's a con. I don't know. But you music is so accessible now. You can you can get music anywhere in the world. Any you just have a push of a button, you can download it. It's in your hand. Um, which is a good thing you know that, that's cool you know we've, we're moving up in the world but then it's also kind of hurts album sales and mm. you know you can't just go gold platinum anymore and those things don't you know the, the musicians don't really make money from that which are you know which i think is really sad um you know but it's also forced musicians to look at other ways uh to do things you know because you're not going to make a million dollars on selling a million cds anymore you know that, that that's not unheard of these days unless right. you're really really huge So then, you know, things like merch come into, come into um, power and you have to, you know, try and find ways to sell merch, you know, you have to think of different ways now to, to become a musician and also make a living of it, you know, which is very different to how it used to be, like, say, in the 80s or 90s and that, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so because of this, guys like you is very important, right, because you, you guys really help the bands to achieve that, right? Yeah, well, I could say the same for you, China, because, you know, you, you just having your podcast and interviewing bands and things like that. It's, it's really important. You know, that's how you help bands get out of there. And, you know, you, you and I both, we, I think we, we're very similar in a way, because obviously we, we both have a podcast, a podcast and we do what we do similar things, you know, where we right. interview bands and musicians. And I think it's a very important thing because, 
you're turning people onto music that they might not have actually heard of before because uh let's take commercial radio they don't in, you know in the past they used to actually play bands who aren't quite well known yet but they don't do that anymore now a big record label comes pays them a whole bunch of money and that's the only thing that you hear on the radio these days so you know without sounding too like i'm patting myself on the back of you but they need people like myself and you you know and other people in the industry to let people actually hear that there's there is other stuff out there there is cool stuff out there and it's underground and it's it's not known yet uh but if you guys just give it a listen give it a uh, give it a chance you know they they could be the next big thing um you know if we all help do our bit to keep building the scene you know that that's what i say <laughs> right actually because i'm also a big fan of music so i go to concerts and you know i always try to give a chance to a new band i would like go yeah. and see them and i i try not to discriminate between like you know their popular band and their this is a new band like you know i try to yeah. give the sort of the same respect because i i really appreciate the creativity and all that these guys put the effort they put right so it's important because beatles was a local band right when yeah. they started so so it's yeah. important so i i as I, as more i bands that i interviewed and more shows that i seen i i really sometimes those bands like especially those new bands they are kind of shy try to even have that you know like if i, I <laughs> yeah. say i can i have a picture with you it's they're like surprised because yeah. sometimes <laughs> people don't treat them that way right <laughs> yeah 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 that's quite sad you know what i mean because you know you need the next beatles you need the next nirvana you know what i mean and you know that like you said you know even the beatles were a local band they started out with a play yeah. i bet you they played they've only played in front of the the sun guy and the waiter and the bar staff you know once in their early career and then right. eventually people caught on to them and then they became this huge big band and you know we need we need to support the bands so they can become that also but it's quite sad that you you know you 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 treat them like they are a, like in inverted commas a big band and you have respect for them and when you go and ask for a photo or something like they get all shy like yeah. <laughs> it's quite sad you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah uh, you got to start somewhere though and that's the, you know that's a good thing that you actually I think you when you do things like that, when we do things like that, it it kind of um gives them that that little bit of extra influence that they want to do it, you know, that that they want to carry on with it because they're like, wow, someone actually likes my music, someone wants a a photo with me, you know, wow, you know, mm. we can actually do something with this. <laughs> right. So that's yeah. one thing that uh, I really love. I I listen to your podcast before the podcast. I I remember we we worked on putting some. I think it was a Sri Lankan band that we put on on one of your radio shows. I think it was Fusion yeah. Radio. So, yeah. so tell me, how did you get into radio? How did you figure um, out you should be in radio? <laughs> <laughs> well, even before even before I joined SME Fusion Radio, so I was on SME Fusion Radio for like four to five years. But mm-hmm. even before that, um, I always kind of wanted to do radio, but I, I was like too scared to talk on air and all that stuff, you know. So then I met this one guy Jeff uh he's uh he's a radio DJ in the US in 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 America and um I eventually got onto his show and I did this thing called the fan base report uh mm-hmm. you know where I would normally I'll just have like 5 minutes on his show like a it's a little segment where I do like music news I used to like say the week's news I used to go on every Friday so I used to say the the like whatever happened in music uh newsworthy I used to say that I used to do a uh, musical birthday so if there was a band or a musician um and it was their birthday during the week then I would mention them you know we'd like to do a birthday special um and that was like about just 5 minutes so that was my kind of intro to radio you know what i mean mm. um we are kind of got the bug way where I thought okay, I can talk on air um i'm doing this fine it's only 5 minutes but you know i i i can do this um yeah so we did that for a while and then um my one friend um who actually happened to be my station manager of STM Fusion Radio um he had just left his old radio station and uh he asked me do you do you want to be a DJ on the on the on my new station mm. so I was like okay cool you know let me give it a try and that was STM Fusion Radio where I was the the lunch DJ for 4 years <laughs> you know um yeah and then um SME Fusion Radio stopped I left you know um we, it just wasn't going anywhere you know it wasn't building up 
so I left that. And then I joined this radio station called Rocksteady 94, mm. um, which I, I'm still supposedly a DJ on it. But the thing is, at the moment, I'm having computer problems. So I can't do a, a show when, when I'm having computer problems. So I've kind of stepped down until I can get things sorted out. But I still consider myself a radio DJ. Um, you know, I will be back in radio as soon as I can get my life sorted out with my computer. Um, but other than that, that's, that's my radio career. So, you know, I've been in radio for, let's say, five or six years, if you count the stuff with Jeff that I did in America. Um, yeah, so I've been on radio about five or six years. And um, then, I, like, I, like I said earlier on in the pandemic, I started podcasting because that's also when my, my computer was giving me problems. So I had to, right. you know, do something to, to fill my time. So I started podcasting where I just interview bands and stuff like that. No music involved in that though. So it's a bit different to what I was doing on radio. Um, yeah, so that's basically where I am and how I got into radio and stuff. Right. <clears throat> so uh, going into podcasting, tell me a little bit about like, what, how, we, how you got influenced to like, you know, start a podcast? Were there any favorite podcasts that you were listening or how, well, how did that happen? <laughs> You think I'm you, you would think I'm just saying this because I'm chatting to you, but I actually liked your podcast. You know what I mean? I liked what you I liked what you were doing. So, you know, I, I used to listen to the bands that you would interview and things like that. And I was like, you know, I would I would like to do what Chan is doing. And there was obviously a few other podcasts that I listened to also, but you, I think I would think it you would if without uh, making you too embarrassed, Chana, you were you were a big influence. You were a big influence on me wanting to start a podcast. You know what I mean? And that's that's why I say we're probably a lot similar in our podcast because we also interview bands and, you know, things like that. Um, but that's what kind of got me into it. And I was doing interviews for SME Fusion Radio. So I kind of knew how to do an interview or talk to bands, you know, and what questions to ask and that. Um, but to actually do it as a podcast where there's not a full radio show with music and stuff, it's just literally two people talking and that's how you got to fill up your time. You know, that, that was a, you know, I had to get used to that. And um, I've been doing that now on the, on the, as we are recording this, I'm on episode 34. Um, so I've released 34 episodes now. And, you know, each, each, each episode, I feel I'm doing a little bit more better. I feel a bit more comfortable and, you know, I can actually talk to bands and, you know, it's, uh, that, so that's where I am now with podcasting <laughs> and how I got right. into it. So, so doing the part and it, so I listened to a couple of episodes of Anything Goes and I think we also have like probably there are a few artists that appeared on both podcasts like for example yeah. both, I think Peter Toussaint I think I saw Peter yeah. Toussaint was on your podcast from Four uh, Sun South <laughs> yeah Four Sun South uh, yeah. so doing the podcast uh, does he so what is challenging about doing the podcast and what is what do you feel as a reward of doing the podcast um, I think the challenging bit is, and this is, you even know this because I've actually asked, asked for your, your help the one day. I'm really struggling with editing uh, right. a podcast. And I know there's um, tutorials out there how to do it. And but I just can't get my head around editing. You know what I mean? So that's one thing that I always struggle with. I always need someone's help with that. But it's also, um, if we're talking about struggles of being a podcast, it's also getting your stuff out there, getting listeners or streaming you know people to actually listen to your podcast it's a bit better now but in the beginning i wasn't even like hitting double digits you know what i mean for the first few podcasts those, those podcasts have now gone up because there's a few more people who have uh, taken interest in it and you know gone back and listened to the very first episodes and all this so I'm, I'm getting there but i think the, the main struggle is to get like i wish i could be one of those people that like have 1.3 million downloads of podcasts of my <laughs> podcast, you know, and things like that. That'll be awesome. And then also just to like make money from it, you know, because obviously I'm using, I'm doing this as my full-time job. Um, you know, so you got to try and make money off it somehow. And uh, you, but obviously you need the the listeners for, let's say you, you got advertisers, but you need the listeners for people to want to advertise on your show. If you only got like say 10 monthly listeners that, that listen every month, you know, people aren't going to want to advertise to 10 people, you know, so that that's the struggle part. Um, but then the reward part is that I've actually, the thing I'm most happy about is that I've actually stuck with this because um, I have this tendency to start something 
and then I'll put it away and then I'll go and carry on with it. But like I said, now nah, it's not a hell of a lot, but I mean, I'm 34 episodes in now and you know, I'm, I'm still enjoying it and I'm still releasing um, at least one or two episodes a week. And, you know, it's, and I feel it's really starting to pick up now, um, which is really cool. You know, so I'm quite proud about that. Um, also just the conversations that you get to have, you know, sometimes I ask like, especially in the beginning stages, I used to ask the same questions all the time mm. and that could get, that, that could sound like it could get boring. But when you're chatting to different people, everyone's got a different story. So, you know, you, you may ask like the same question here and there, but you get so many different <laughs> answers with, with it. And that's like the interesting part and what I like, you know, I like talking to people. I like talking to musicians particularly. And uh, it's just interesting to hear their life story and how they got into music and, you know, what they're hoping to do with their career and, and all of that type of stuff. And you get so many different stories and, you know, some of them can be quite serious. Some of the, some of the musicians I've spoken to, we spoke about mental health early on. A lot of the musicians struggle with that, you know, so you get to hear about that, uh, things you didn't quite know about a musician until you actually have a conversation with them. And then there's like other uh, conversations where you actually have like a real good time. You're laughing. It's a, a fun joking time, you know, so, you know, that, that's why I, uh, the pros of being in a podcast and what I enjoy about what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, to tell you like my journey like i yeah. i started the podcast because of the acts because of the pandemic because i couldn't go to shows anymore so <laughs> i i thought i'll just talk to my you know the concert friends who are like there was a regular bunch of people we always go to the concerts together so i started yeah. talking yeah. to them about you know our experiences about watching metallica or megadeth or something like that that was the beginning actually and then yeah. along the way i got when they saw that i'm putting out this content Be earlier it was just a couple of youtube videos right so then there were like a couple of local bands who said they're interested to come and talk about what they're doing and yeah and then yeah. and then i it, it just started slowly rolling and then i suddenly i i got i get contacted from somebody in canada or somebody in south <laughs> africa and somewhere and then but along the way what i felt i, I kind of found found a purpose because i was really helping the the new bands as you said yeah and i saw that people who came on the podcast after a few months they were like getting some some collaboration with somebody or some something mm. good was happening to them so i felt that and especially during the pandemic i felt that i i was really helping them to you know because there were no other outlet for them during the pandemic this was like yeah. one of yeah. the outlets so so it, it kind of i kind of find a found the purpose but along the way also i sometimes i feel so drained like you know i maybe i don't want i don't want to do yeah. it today or something but yeah. you know you take a break and then you start again and then you keep on yeah. going right? <laughs> I, th I think i think people don't understand how much work goes into this type of thing they think oh you're just on you're just interviewing someone for an hour a day or you're on you're talking for an hour a day or whatever and that's your day it's not only that it's like the you got to get the artist's and um you know you got to put everything together you know send in the zoom link i know it sounds all stupid but you know it takes a lot of you got to do your re your research on the band sometimes right. you know you know so that takes up a bit of time um then it's the editing I, we spoke about the editing that takes a lot of time sometimes you know depending you know how uh, how many glitches you've had in your interview and then it's the, you know you got to like market your own podcast you've got to get it out then that's something i've always admired about you because you know how many times i've seen china 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 number one on on some <laughs> podcasting yeah. i was like that's where i want to get I, want, you know, I wish i can be number one on something you know what i mean so you know you, but it, it takes a lot of work to get yourself there you know you really got to market yourself and you really got to know what you're doing um yeah and that's that's the you know so it, it does take it uh, your toll. It does take a toll on it. And I understand where you're coming from when you say you don't really feel like doing this interview today or doing that today, you know, how, how can you get out of it? But then, you know, you, I, I've often felt like that, but you know what the weird thing is when I often feel like that and I think, okay, well, let me just, you know, not get out of it. Let me just do the interview. And some of those are sometimes my best interviews. Like I wasn't expecting much, but right. when I've actually, got into the interview i was like you know what this is actually pretty cool i mean i'm enjoying myself we're having a cool conversation and you know and then you you're quite glad that you didn't try and get out of it because you know it actually worked out in the end you actually feel better that you did do it and you had a good time you know 
yeah and then one mm. big rewarding thing for me like i found like i i through the podcast they came as guests but they became very good friends there were a lot of people i met through the podcast now who are like my like although we we haven't met some of them personally yet but it it became like uh, good friends <laughs> dashi i wanted to ask you regarding um you know you you organize bands you know you manage bands and also you uh, organize concerts and gigs as well so tell me a little bit about this south african music scene and i also know there is another bigger african music scene as well right so tell me about that scene yeah well i can talk a lot about the south african scene because obviously i'm from it and i'm part of it um like i mentioned earlier you know with the whole apartheid thing i would say the music scene wasn't as big back then um but at the moment um it's weird because like you even said that you didn't even know that um there was a a music scene yeah in south africa until people uh started contacting you from south africa uh which right. is quite weird uh, um because um the thing is um the thing is we we got a very good music scene and it's it's growing every day um it's getting much more bigger you know every time but the pand- obviously the pandemic didn't help that uh you know because you were like no gigs and stuff like that but say say the pandemic and covid didn't exist um are you still there yeah i mean oh, sorry okay it looks like you were gone sorry so say say the pandemic didn't exist um then the problem is to get people through the door uh you know to get people to support the gigs uh that's the, the one thing i i've discovered being a band manager and someone who organizes gigs uh to get people to come and support the gigs it's very very hard uh yeah in south africa um so you got to plan it properly you got to advertise it properly and you also got to do it at a certain time of the month um because you know once people have been paid then they'll come out you know but if you do it like in the middle of the month then you're not going to get many people so i guess what i'm trying to say is you know we got a good music scene it's very pumping and all that at times um but you also got to do it right you know what i mean it's, uh, i think in america and places like that um people go to gigs more often and it's more bigger over there obviously um but we you know we're getting there in yeah in south africa <laughs> right so so i see the can you tell me a little bit about the anything goes podcast so uh is it is it available now in all the platforms what's the plan for that and if somebody is want to check this out what episodes do you recommend to listen first okay cool um i haven't got it on all the uh podcast uh, platforms yet um i still want to get into like apple uh, you know and all the other places um but at the moment it's on anchor.fm uh that is like a podcasting host place we can put your podcast on so you can go to anchor.fm uh dazzy clayton and you should find my podcast over there it's also on spotify uh if you go and search uh, anything goes podcast over there you can uh, find it on on spotify and then it's also on google Pla- uh sorry google podcast sorry it's on those three platforms so i still got to grow it more and put it on a few more platforms and the 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 difference between mine and your podcast is you actually have video uh with yours mine mine doesn't have video mine's just mm-hmm. audio you know it's just the audio um so i still want to go into the whole video thing and get it on youtube you know and things like get um eventually so that's what i want to do um yeah so as far as uh what else did you ask me sorry but uh, chana you you asked me where so what else was it if somebody want to like start listening to it any specific episodes okay. that you would recommend to start with oh sure so <laughs> well um i would say start at the beginning but no if you don't want to go all the way to the beginning that's fine um bands and musicians that i've actually got to interview which was really cool um i chat to a lot of musicians and a lot of bands and they're all pretty cool but one that stood out for me was uh one that's just recently been um uh released that's uh, an artist called Kenny Hughes Uh, he's a blues rock artist here in South Africa and uh I've just uh, released a episode with him so I'll say go and check that out um also um who else have I spoken to um there's there's a pretty cool um podcast with uh Gerald Clark if you want to go and check him out I've, I've managed to speak to him 
Uh, he's a cool uh, musician from South Africa. Uh, so you should go and check him out if you want to, and then also listen to the podcast. Um, and um, Infanteria, yeah, that, that's a very good one. Uh, they're a cool metal band here from South Africa. I speak to a lot of South African musicians, although I do speak to some musicians also outside of South Africa, so you can also find those podcasts. But I'll say Infanteria, that was also a really cool um, uh, podcast to, to do. So go and check those out. And uh, yeah, if you're um, interested in those ones, then uh, listen to the other ones also. Maybe sit back uh, while you're doing your work, have the podcast playing in the background, and uh, listen to some of the interviews. I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, Dasi, uh, what's your message to the viewers of this video and people who's going to listen to this episode? Uh, my message is uh, just thanks, first of all, for all the support. I know there will be a few people who have supported me who will be listening to this podcast for this conversation. Uh, so, thank you very much uh, to those people. Uh, also, thank you to you, Chana. You, you're doing a lot for the music industry. And uh, you, like I said, I think you and I, have the same views and the same aspects of what we want for, for the music industry. So just thank you to you uh, for doing what you do and helping building the scene that way. And uh, yeah, if you are a new listener, if it's the first time that you've heard me now, please do go and check out my podcast and uh, sit back and enjoy and uh, listen to them and also share them, please, guys. I would really appreciate it um, if you share them and let other people listen to them. But yeah, just a big thank you. And um, that's my message. <laughs> And go and right. go and see a show. Go and see a show. Now that we are allowed to uh, watch live gigs again, go and go support a venue, go support a band, and uh, let's build up the scene again. Uh, because we all know that lockdown was very hard for us. <laughs> right. Uh, anybody you want to shout out to? Oh, just um, yeah, just uh, once again, thanks to everyone who supported me. Everyone in the music industry, all the PR people. Uh, as to we, I think you and I speak to a lot of PR guys and and women. Um, and they help me out a lot. They support, uh, they, they supply a lot of the bands that I get to chat to. So Devo, um, there's uh, Catherine from CJC Promotions. Uh, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to them. And um, yeah, and, and one of the bands that you actually um, have interviewed, I don't think it's out yet, but I'm sure it'll be out when this comes out. There's a band that I actually work with, um, Mill Van Netting. Uh, right. <laughs> So, yeah, I want to give them a shout out and uh, I'm working with them at the moment, um, helping them get their, their band out. So go and check out their band. And also, if you don't mind, go and give their, their Facebook page a like on that. <clears throat> right, Dasi. Uh, <laughs> I really, you know, thanks for joining this and then finally able to, you know, see you uh, on video. And yeah. uh, I really enjoy this conversation. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, all the... Uh, good luck with your plans with your podcast i hope it will grow and uh, we i'll also help as much as i can to promote it and uh, yeah thanks again for joining thanks very much for having me on chan and uh, likewise uh, good luck with your side and like i said you know whatever i can do for you i'll do what i can and that's what we got to do we got to help each other in this industry and uh, we we we'll i'll have your back if you have mine <laughs> <laughs> right so th have a great day ahead dasi Thanks for joining. Thank, thanks very much, Shanna. It's been Thank awesome you. chatting to you. Bye.